So welcome to Drawing with Miss Liberty, um, some sketching lessons uh, with color pencil, uh, felt tip marker, um, and uh, composition. Uh, today's lesson, we are going to uh, make this succulent poster, or this succulent illustration, I should have called it. Um, you can use whatever colors you want. Um, I just uh, got inspired by colors from my garden, so these aren't like this succulent doesn't actually look like that, but I wanted those colors. Uh, let me go over with you the materials needed for today's lesson. So starting out, you're going to need a pencil, either a lightweight pencil for sketching, or I'm using a mechanical pencil so that it's dark enough so that you can see my lines. I also have a fine tip pen or felt marker, and then a, uh, a large fine tip pen or felt marker. So. Um, I also have my trusty kneaded eraser. If you haven't gotten one of these yet, I suggest you upgrade from your pink eraser to a kneaded eraser. It's also great um, to relieve stress. I have started using the 12 pack of Crayola color pencils uh, so that uh, the lessons that I'm doing seem a little bit more accessible. So I picked these up at, um, I think, Wal uh, Target. Um, or you can buy them if you have like a local art store or a uh, pharmacy. So this has the 12 colors. Uh, I have uh, red, red orange, sky blue, brown, green, black, violet, white, yellow, green, orange, blue, and yellow. So all the colors I got out of here, I got from using these colors here. And we're going to talk about blending them when we go over more. So I'm going to put all my pencils in here. And I'm going to put all these in here. The only thing I need right now is my pencil and my eraser to erase any lines I'm not happy with. So other than those materials, you're going to need paper. And I went ahead and got a lot of paper in case I want to start over. Um, also, there's a sheet of extra sheets of paper to catch any of my felt marker that might bleed through. So it will kind of shows on the other side it might bleed through. So you want a piece of paper underneath um, that. So go ahead and make sure you have a clean sheet of white paper. Eight and a half by 11 is what I'm working with. But if you want to fold it in half and work smaller, you can go ahead and do that. So one more look at our finished piece. So we're going to put together three different types of succulents. Um, we have uh, one of the more popular ones here. can't think of the name of it, but it's a really big one. Instead of making it green on the outside, I wanted to make it pink, pink on the inside. Um, we have a little cactus back here. I know this one's called String of Pearls, and then this succulent that comes up here. We also did a nifty little thing with the frame here. You know that. You guys know I like to do nifty things with frames. And we did a good amount of shading and color blending work um, to give some form to our string of pearls and to give some color detail to our succulent um, and the same with our succulent up here. So, all right, let's get started. Last look before we move on. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, so to do my succulent um, poster, uh, I started by gritting off my page. So um, to make it simple, we're just gonna go in half both ways. So if you can't find the halfway mark, you could fold your paper in half. Or you can use a ruler or you can just eyeball it. I like to fold it in half that way. So make a straight line or straight-ish line just so you can see the center. And then another line going across so you can see the center there. Now the major focus on our original portrait is kind of up here. So that's where a lot of the busiest goes on and down here. So if we split this in half, we'd be a little bit below the half here and a little bit above the half on this side. So we want to go ahead and lay that out. So first I'm gonna lay out my most emphasized succulent um, and that guy's going to go over here. So he's just going to be a big circle for now. That's my, my big rosette succulent that I'm going to put over there. 
he's just a big circle. And then I am going to do my cactus, which is going to be another circle next to that one. And then I'm going to make like clouds, which are going to show where my string of pearls are going to go. They're going to go like right there my pearls and this is pretty much the top of my pot so i'm gonna make a curved line like that to go the top of my pot so the top of my pot kind of rests kind of rests on the center line so this top of my pot and then if that's going to be the top we're going to do the bottom of our pot it's going to be down here not too close to the bottom but you want to make another curved line like that so we're kind of making a cylinder, but just from the front view. So if this was our pot, it would be like that. So it would curve, but we're just doing it in the front. So there's the top, there's the bottom, and we have a lip on our pot. So the lip's gonna come down towards this line but not at the same direction because then we're gonna go like that. And then this is gonna go, it's gonna curve around and mimic that curve. That's just the little lip on our pot. And then the bottom of it will be smaller. So you should just be sketching we're going to ink over these lines and erase them. So if you need to fix the curve of something, you can fix it. You're allowed to make a lot of lines. And we kind of want to center the pot if we can. Okay, so, so far you should have two circles some clouds and you've sketched out your pot. So we got the one big circle just above and to the right. We've got a second little circle right here that's going to be our cactus. And then we have some clouds. Those are gonna be our string of pearls. And then we need a curve. We need another curve. Connect those two. Make a curve down here, bring that up like that. Now we're going to do our succulents that reach up like this right here. And to sketch those guys in, they're just going to be simply a couple of curved strokes that come up. One comes up from here, about that high. And then the other one comes from here and goes way up to the top and overlaps the center line. And then there's a second one that comes right here. So these are going to go behind the succulent, but I kind of want to see my curve go all the way down. I want to see where it's going to fall into the pot, even though I'm not going to see it. Okay, and then for these to do the little leaves on it, we, we just do a little oval up here. That's gonna be a bundle of them. And we're gonna alternate between going on the side, in the middle, on the side, in the middle, on the side, in the middle, and then on the side like that and you do the same thing for the smaller ones you kind of got an oval here that's where these bunches are going to go but we're not going to do those until we finish flushing it out and we're going to alternate between going on the side in the middle on the side same on this one but he's going to have a smaller oval up here we're going to go on the side, the middle, on the side, in the middle, on the side. 
And so there's that there. So now that we've flushed that out, we can go ahead and do our frame. And for our frame, I went a full inch in. I have a very thick frame on this piece. So you could start, I like to start in the corner, figure out, let me get squared like an inch in this way and an inch in that way. And then just drag it across. Hold on a second. We get a straighter line. And about an inch in and an inch across. An inch in and an inch across. line my page up again okay so let me make my frame a little bit darker so that you could see it don't make yours too dark you're going to eventually erase it after you ink over it now, I don't know if you see but I'm breaking the frame in three different places I'm breaking the frame on this side breaking the frame here and up here And there is a fly in my room, so hopefully you can't hear it. And on this one, I did a little decorative, kind of like a stamp look on the inside of my frame. So that's just, we go ahead and make a quarter of a circle on the edges. So go ahead and do that. If you want to, you can make a different frame if you want to go like this instead. Make a little frame like that. You could do that. You can see that. You could do that instead of the curve. But I want to do the curve. Maybe we'll do that in the next one. Remember, we're just sketching, so if we make a mistake, we could just go over it so I get rid of those corners. Don't need those. Okay. Now let's do some more details. Hey mom, thanks for joining. Love you too. All right, so let's go ahead and work on our string of pearls. Let's go over here. So basically our pearls, what we're gonna fill in is just a bunch of little circles. They almost look like peas. And then we're going to have a couple of strands that will come down. So let's go ahead and put those strands in. So I want one to cascade off the side here. I want one more to cascade down. I want one that's going to come way out here over the frame. And then one that's just going to kind of dawdle over there. I want to make it really interesting. So I want a lot of movement around here. Um, so go ahead and start filling in your space with, uh, with tiny circles. Just don't get in the way of, you have your cactus right here. I want my cactus to kind of poke out over. So I won't make any bubbles past this line right here. So this is, that's cactus space. So go ahead and just start. Oh yeah, and then my other, my other succulent will go out about that far. So let's start making little tiny circles. You can put them right up against each other um, because when you felt them, you'll overlap them more. And if you see, you see what I'm doing? So just, you can overlap them. You could just do them side by side because when you ink it, your marker will automatically overlap. Just remember the more circles you make, the more you have to color. They do have to be small and about the same size. And I'm going to have my lid cover there so the pearls won't go over that line. I'm going to do 
you see me just keep going keep filling it up with circles And then coming down here, I'm going to have a group of them here, and then just a couple of them coming down. Same with here. Group of them here, and a couple of them coming down. Same with this one. There's a group of them coming down. And there we go. So we've done with our curls. So next let's go ahead and do our big leafy succulent here on the right. Sorry guys, having some technical difficulties. So for this we're going to do a rosette and for the center of my rosette I want it slightly off center. I'm going to go ahead and get these lines out of my way because the succulent's going to be in the foreground right here. So it's similar to doing a rose. So you're going to start with one petal, two, three, and then keep adding overlap it. So I start with, I start with one petal and then keep going. And it's good to go back to the one you just finished. So like if I just did this one, I'm going to start on it, finish it, start on it, so like that. You can also do this shape if you want to. You don't have to make the spiky top if you don't want to. There's also this shape. This one's a little harder. So however you want to do that. So I'm going to do the regular rosette. So this is going to be my center. So I'm going to start here. The smaller you make these, the more shading you're going to have to do. So I'd start to get bigger um, fairly early. Hopefully you see uh, them getting larger as I go around. Don't be afraid to turn the page so that it's easier to make your lines. Once I get close to the outside, I'm going to make my leaves closer to the leaves in front of them. So this one will go right behind it and then this one you can't see this one you can't see this one you can see I'm just gonna come back around and I think I'm just gonna stop there and you just want to stop once you've filled up your circle so just keep going until you filled up your circle and then you've finished your rosette I'll let you start over or catch up you wanted to see how I did the rosette again I started with just a little teardrop like that I made another petal attached to that one then I attached those two together with another petal then I attached that one with the petal and so on and so forth Keep going like that. So you can start like that. And attach, 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 attach. 
Can you see where I'm going? Like that. Okay, our little cactus is super easy. He's just a bunch of spikes, um, but we also put some flowers on him because he's in blue. Um, so we kind of did this five point, 10 point um, flower right here, which looks similar to the one I have in my backyard. So if you just start by make a little sliver like that, one more. And you can make your shapes very organic if you want. It's supposed to look very organic. So go ahead and do that. We'll do one here. So that's my center. There we go. I've got the ones behind there. And then there's going to be one more, but this one's coming off the side, but I'm still going to see plenty of petals. And then the rest are spikes, little spiny needles that hurt when you touch them. Don't grab this cat. This succulent is not fun to pick up. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do a spike all over. And I'm going to do them in the global so they're all going to come out and make a globe. All right, so next let's get the details for our succulents up here. So these guys kind of look like little toes. So if you want to see, they're like teeny tiny little toes. So it was a little oval shape like that. They are a little smaller at the bottom than they are at the top. And then at the top here, they're just overlapping each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to sketch in the shape overlapping itself like that and then when we ink it we're just going to make sure we don't go over where we don't want to go over you see how that worked out okay so that's what we're going to do up at the top. Let's see if I can get you in a little bit closer to see some of this detail. So there we go. I'm going to turn the page. So I'm going to start with this guy here. I'm just going to sketch the little toes overlapping each other until I fill up that little bubble. Just like that. These ones are in the front. I'm going to do the same thing this one. I'm just going to sketch them. Until I fill up that little area. Same thing here. Just like that. And I also want to thicken these lines, so I'm going to come around, I'm just going to go from here. Just like that. Same thing with the other one. Well, these are sketching lines, so it's okay if you overlap, as long as when you're inking, you know what you're doing. And the same thing with the pearls lines down here. So we're going to want to make those. I'm going to want to make these a little bit thicker. These are supposed to be really thin, but we want to give them some thickness.
and just one more. Okay, let me lift you back up. Okie dokie. So let's check to make sure we got everything here. We just have to do the decoration on our pot. Um, do another little soaker there. So on our pot here, I just put a couple of little stars on here. So I just copied this curve twice going down and then made a little grid and then put the little stars in. So you could do that. I like stars. You could also do hearts. Maybe I'll do hearts on this one. So. And I'll do one row instead of two. So just copy that curve, either the bottom or the top curve. Do a little grid. Because I want you to see the profile of the design there as well. So, and then we'll do some hearts. And I don't think I want one there. I think just there and there. If you feel like your pot's a little short, you can make it longer. I think mine's perfect. I like it just the way it is. Okay, and that would be all of your sketching work for now. Uh, you can make these little toes a little bit better shapes if you want to. And some of them go in front of the stem, and then some of them go behind the stem. If you get what I'm saying, that one's in front, that one's behind. Same with the ones on the side. Some of them are coming from behind the stem. Some of them are coming from in front. So just kind of get those details in when you go in. Now's the time to do it. I'm gonna strengthen the outline on this succulent so that I don't make a mistake and cover it up with something. If you wanna do any of that, kinda of like I want my pot to show here and my beads to go behind it. Maybe I'll do that again here. I want them to go behind it. And over here I want, I want them to go in front of it. And then I would stop. Kind of get these details in now. And maybe I'll do another one down that. And then that one's in front. Emphasize the pearls that are in front of other pearls for when you go to ink it. Well, just so you can see that these are in front. And then these come behind it. This stem, I like how on here it comes down into the pearls. So we're going to go ahead and bring that down to about there. Add one more little guy on here. And so this pearl is in front, but these are behind it. So just get some definition like that. Make sure I don't get in the way of my succulent. This one is in front, but this one is behind. All right, let me just give you a couple moments to catch up. I might add one more petal back here. If you have to add something to balance it out, now is a good time. Let me give you a few moments while I check our time. Okay, if you're ready to start inking, go ahead and get your ink pens out. Um, I have 
a fine tip pen here. I have a Sharpie. I also found these awesome Culpic liners, which have all different weights on them. Maybe I should try one of these out. Let's just use what we've been using. So starting first with uh, the thicker tipped pen. I'm gonna start with my biggest subject, which is uh, this succulent right here. And I'm gonna turn the page for myself as I'm going along. Um, don't press super duper hard uh, because you don't want your lines to be too thick yet. In fact, I'm gonna switch Sharpies to this other one. And just start outlining. Make sure you have paper underneath you to catch the bleed through from the Sharpie. Remember, turn the page if you need to, to make a better line. It's okay. Be patient with yourself to make good lines. It takes some time. If you rush, you'll make mistakes. You might make mistakes even if you don't rush, but that's okay. Now's the time to change your lines if you don't like how they go. These ones started to go behind. Okay, dokie. So we finished that succulent there. Next I'm going to do these ones up here and remember how I told you about the overlapping the top. So you're going to start at the base and then you're going to do that little toe. Then you're going to do the ones next to it. Then you're going to go over the next one and the ones next to it. The next one, the ones next to it. And then I just did like two there like that and remember some of these are in front and some are in back so only trace what part is in front of the stem now this one goes behind it so i'm just going to do the outside of it and be really careful when you do these lines You want to use your fine tip marker instead I totally understand sorry camera all right so same thing here so start with the bottom one and then add the ones next to it and then the next one in the middle and the ones next to it and the next one in the middle and the ones next to it and then these little toes remember make the paper work for you that's all you have to do to turn it to make a better line go ahead and turn it okay so let's go ahead and do this guy over here same thing as these toes here except we have fewer of them so there's that one the ones next to it and then we just have three more 
at the top. This one goes behind the stem, this one goes in front, this one goes in front, this one goes behind, this one goes in front. We just put one there. So be use your finer tip pen if you can't make good lines here. If you feel confident, go for it. If you make a mistake, that's okay. And it's going to go down like that. All right. So uh, next, let's go ahead and do our cactus back here. We'll do our pearls last because they're the most work. Um, so go ahead and do our spines on the outside. We're just going to go over that one a little bit. And then our ones that overlap are pearls down here. I'm going to go ahead and do my flower. You could use the fine tip pen for this too. Um, but I want to make my lines thick. You could also change your lines when you're using your Sharpie. You don't have to follow your original lines perfectly. It helps if you got them right the first time, but you don't always. And this one here. And then we got, oh, oh, I didn't do those ones. Just a couple. And then we'll do the rest with the fine tip one. Okay, so next let's do our pearls. So let's start with our pearls that are in the front. Go ahead and just circle those. Just the front ones for now. Those are the ones that you're going to see the whole circle of it. Nothing is overlapping it. Okie dokie. Put that one there. Pick a couple more to be in front. So just pick a couple of circles because you're just going to these are going to be perfectly round, and then the ones behind it are going to overlap. So you have a perfect circle, and then these ones are kind of going to go like this. As opposed to the way we drew them, you're not going to go like this. You're going to attach them on because they're overlapping each other. So go ahead and start making circles. This is the edge of my bowl, you go ahead and make the edge of your bowl lines. Or edge of your pot. These overlap. Keep going. And then of course these are full circles down here. Again, if you just have to make up new lines, that's okay. Keep going. You might have to do some extra 
front circles. Fill the space, and if it's too small to fit one in, we're just going to make it dark. All right, that looks like we're good. If you want to make some bundles, like just make it more interesting in some areas, that's fine too. Next, we're going to do the pot. Let me let you catch up on doing the, the pearls. For the pearls, I did use the fine tip pen to do the strands. They're just way too fine. May let you catch up. Okay, so we're going to do the pot now. So remember the top lip of the pot overlaps the bottom of it. So let's just go ahead and do the top only. It's going to come down. I'm going to go ahead and do both sides so then I can turn and then meet them We're using one stroke. There's a fly on my head. Just remember to leave some space for your strands to go over. I made a mistake there. And don't go over your strands. I made the mistake of doing it once already. This side you got nothing to worry about. I do that and then I'm going to come turn it so I can make like that. And then I want my hearts to be so that I can fill them in. This one I can't really see because it's got the strands there. And next we're going to do our frame. Remember, don't go over your subject. So then use your whole arm to make the straight lines. You could use a ruler if you want to, but I said before I don't like my ruler. It's just more stuff to work with on the table for me, honestly. I'm just doing the between the arches and then I'm going to come back and do each arch individually. Should just be working with one piece of paper, but then my marker would bleed all over the place. Okie dokie. And last is to take your fine tip and do the little strands. So get in there. I'm going to get real close to the paper. You might even see my head in the shot. But if you have to get close, get close. Work smarter, not harder. Don't make it hard on yourself. Make it easy. And today we're only going to do this line work. We're going to color on Friday. This way you don't have to feel rushed to finish in the first session. And I don't have to feel rushed. And I'm going to put in some more spikes on my cactus because 
These guys are actually really, really spiky. And I'm going to do a little bit of detail on my petals. Just a little bit. And then you just erase the lines you don't want, which are all of the pencil lines at this point. I see I missed some opportunity to put texture right there. And I remind you during the lesson to sketch lightly because you're going to erase your pencil lines at the end after you ink it. Mine are a little bit darker so that you can see them on the video, which is why it's taking me so long to erase. But yours should not be as difficult to erase. Mine are just extra difficult because they're dark. It's also a heavyweight pencil. All right. And I forgot one thing. We're going to give our little, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to give like a little table line, a little background line across there. Uh, you don't have to, but I want to, and mine's going to go, mine's going to go, do I like it there? No, mine's going to go down here. You could use a ruler if you want to, I don't care to. There we go. Could erase those lines also. All right, so you follow along with the video at your own speed, but by the end of the video, you should have your inked outlines done of uh, four different varieties of succulents in a pot in a nice little stamp style frame. Um, I gave mine a little table background just to give the background something a little more interesting going on. Like I said, again, we are going to color this page using some blending techniques and some shading techniques, some more blending, some more shading um, on Friday starting at 3. If you do have some uh, technological equipment, you can go ahead and take this nice ink drawing and you could scan it or copy it so that you have more than one copy. Um, I am going to scan either this one or this one and put it on my website so you can download it and color it along with some of my other former um, video drawings. So if you, for some reason, don't get a chance um, to do the drawing part of the session, but you want to do the coloring part, you can go to my website and download the coloring pages and you can just color along with me on Friday. So again, thank you for hanging out with me today and doing this cool little succulent piece. Maybe we should paint it sometime when I get some nice watercolor sets, but for now, look forward to the water to the color pencils on Friday.